today in the current world scenario each one of us is holding a mobile phone in our hands and it has slowly become an integral part of our daily lives nearly around 20 years back this was like a dream roughly around 7.26 billion population of the world today are using mobiles even the larger bulky assembled cpus are transformed into sleek design laptops with high end graphics normally when we go for shopping to buy a smartphone there are a few basic things which you usually check like what is the battery lifetime of the device is there any heating issue associated with it the kind of processor being used the camera and the display quality the number of features the device can accommodate or how smooth or how fast the device can respond and many such features all these are nothing but the different facets of vlsi and semiconductor innovation and it's only possible by embedding or integrating millions of transistors into a single chip and reducing the technology parameter node to form an integrated circuit not only in the field of mobiles and cpus vlsi provided numerous series of innovation over the past few decades in the field of like graphics processing unit servers computing unit memories and even the rocket propulsion system and in doing so we need to take care of three parameters which are also called as three pillars of vlsi industry that is power speed and area in short for any device the power consumption should be as low as possible the speed should be fast and the area requirement should be minimal but all these are the different innovation which has already happened and as the famous moore's law suggested the number of transistors will double after every 2 years so the next big question is what are those future technologies which can boost the impact of semiconductor or in short can drive the next future wave of innovation the answer to this question lies in the plethora of technologies like artificial intelligence machine learning big data analytics iot's which all falls under the category of cyber physical systems which means the machines are intelligent enough to interact with the other machines tries to detect their fault and rectify them in short it promotes automation however as we move towards the next industrial revolution it demands more collaborative approach between the humans and the machines it means like the more complex and the innovative task should be performed by the humans and the repetitive and the automated task should be performed by the machines in short it requires continuous upskilling for both of them so in this era of industrial revolution there are primarily two technologies which emerged out as winners and has the potential to drive the next future wave of innovation those are ai and blockchain which combinedly form web 4.0 now before i deep dive into web 4.0 or what does it mean we should be aware of what are the other previous revision of web technologies and how web 4.0 evolved over time back in the year 1990s when we used to view an internet page our interaction as a user to a particular internet page is very limited what i mean to say is that let's say we open a blog post or kind of any internet page in those years we as a user can only have the right per, uh, uh, read permission we don't have any right permission that era is termed as web 1.0 where an user interaction was very limited after that social media boom came where we have facebook instagram youtube in which an user can interact with a particular web page in the form of likes comment and shares so what changes from web 1.0 to web 2.0 in web 2.0 the user has both read and write permission so that era is termed as web 2.0 after web 2.0 a completely new technology arrives and that is called as web 3.0 which bank on the idea of decentralization that means there is no central authority and works on the principle of blockchain web 3.0 itself gives birth to two different technologies that is called as decentralized application popularly known as dapps 
and the other one is decentralized autonomous organization popularly known as DAO. These two technologies DAO and DApps has already disrupted few industries like healthcare, insurance, finance and even to some extent real estate as well. Now citing some examples if we took finance there are some protocol DAOs popularly known as Uniswap, Compound, Synthetics which has already like streamlined few processes in the finance and commonly known as DEFI that is decentralized finance. They have streamlined the loan intake process, the crowdfunding process and curtail the KYC process. Similarly in the field of insurance we have Nexus Mutual. It also smoothed the process of the reimbursement and the claims from the insurance sector. Due to the central authority there might be some delays from the third party providers or from the insurance agent in getting the claim reimbursed on time. So to minimize those kind of delays blockchain or the web 3.0 came into picture so that we don't have any central authority and each and every transaction is recorded transparent and traceable. Similarly in the case of real estate we can have smart contract which is a self executing code running on the blockchain. So with the help of smart contract DApps can be built on the Ethereum blockchain in which there are certain rules and regulation in which both the parties involved in the real estate needs to be maintained and abide by those particular laws. So after web 3.0 there is a popular technology that evolved that is called as web 4.0 and I, as I earlier mentioned it consists of two primarily technologies that is artificial intelligence and blockchain. Now the next thing is that how web 4.0 is going to drive or boost the semiconductor industry or in short can has the potential to drive the next future wave of innovation. Generally when we ship a product to the market uh, be it any smartphone or processor or any kind of GPUs we need to be 100% sure there should not be any silicon bugs in the design because a particular bug or a fault can derail the entire project execution life cycle or cost millions of rupees. So as a VLSI engineers we need to write multiple test scenarios to check if any bugs are hiding in the design. Now in those cases machine learning can help me. With the help of machine learning I can generate a trained model which is intelligent enough to write the test scenarios and has the potential to catch the bugs within the design. In short it can reduce my debug and coding effort. Nowadays there are many EDA tools are coming in which the ML based algorithms are already built in and it has the potential to categorize the failures of the silicon bugs and also to find out the root cause of those failures. In short again it reduces the coding effort. With the advanced application like convolutional neural network and the recurrent neural network it already emerged as the primary winners in the field of image processing applications. Moreover with the help of ML based algorithms the EDA tool can be further optimized to catch more bugs and reduce the coding effort of an engineer. The other spectrum of web 4.0 that is blockchain is equally helpful. So let's say as I earlier mentioned the blockchain technology there are in primarily four types of blockchain. One is known as the public blockchain as we all know Bitcoin and Ethereum falls under this class. There is one more area of blockchain which are private which is completely private and the access authority is kind of uh, given to only one owner and it's quite debatable that whether it's actually a blockchain or not because it's kind of became a moving towards the centralization. So Ripple is one kind of example. The third category falls under consortium blockchain which are mix of public and the private and the fourth category is known as the permission blockchain. Hyperledger fabric is one of the primary example of permission blockchain and this permission blockchain is already been in use by the enterprise to streamline some of the processes. For example with the help of permission blockchain more and more engineers can work on the same project without getting bogged down because of the centralization. That means more and more engineers has the transparency and the traceable what the other engineer is doing instead of getting the process of centralization where one engineer check in his files and the other person then 
check out his file and then move on with the other process. So all those processes can be streamlined with the help of permission blockchain that is the hyperledger fabric. The second application is in the area of IP protection and supply chain management. IP protection is a critical area in the field of semiconductor because uh, it uh, uh, security and the other aspects of the temper proof are associated with it. But with the help of blockchain, since every transactions are recorded and traceable, those security concerns can be erased out and it should be maintained that the privacy with the help of the IP protection and the supply chain managements are maintained. The fourth category comes with the help of the smart contract. With the help of the smart contract compatible with the IP, the code can be written so that some of the space can be offloaded with some simulation over to the blockchain. So these are primarily few advantages of the blockchain. There will be multiple more as we explode into the era of blockchain and AI in the future years. Last but not the least, I want to end the talk with a simple thought. There are many technologies out there. Some are explored, some are not explored, and some are yet to be created. But the most important thing among all of them is that how we can apply those skills, learn them to make this world a better place to live in. Thank you.